we are going to use LSTM, which stands for Long Short Term Memory Networks, Neural Networks, in order to forecast cryptocurrency values ahead. Now, this is a bit of a controversial model because I've seen a lot of videos and images and posts that people try to use these LSTMs in order to predict cryptos or stocks, and they seem to be doing amazingly well on training data set. However, they are a terrible model to use for predicting ahead on unseen data as you're going to see at the end of this video. However, we are going to try and experiment with this model just for educational purposes so you can see how bad this model is on predicting stock prices and crypto prices ahead. Now, in this video, we are going to go through both the code, so the Python code on how to develop and create and tune this model, and we are also going to show how to create this streamlit app from scratch where you pass the cryptocurrency symbol over here the days you want to predict ahead you click predict and this is going to go and run the model from scratch it's going to train it again it's going to do hyper parameter tuning identify the best model and then return the results and the results are basically the predictions on the training data set the testing data set and also predicting ahead i also have the latest close price of the symbol which is going to be this price over here and the price after 15 days which is the price prediction ahead this model works on any cryptocurrency so over here you can just type in another cryptocurrency like xrp usd click predict and this is going to repeat the same process. You can see it's running. There you go. We have our results. As you can see, very good predictions on training and almost on testing. But on future predictions and unseen data, it does not do very well. It's, it's terrible, right? Let's test something else. Let's do Doge. There you go. You can see extremely well on testing and training, not that well on the predictions ahead. I mean, we don't know, but it does not look great on predictions ahead. Right, going back into our model. And before we start this video, let me just say that if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please consider liking this video, subscribing to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting with the first thing we have, we have to load our raw data. But before we do that, make sure that you have all these libraries installed on your PC. If you're missing any of these libraries, then type in pip install and then the name of the library, run this and it's going to install the library on your PC. First, we run this piece of code, which is basically ignoring all the warnings when we're going to be looping and running multiple different models. And then over here, I'm specifying the crypto symbol. I'm going to use BTC to start with, then the predictions ahead, which is going to be the days ahead. Then I am loading my data by using the Yahoo Finance library. So first I pass the symbol, which is going to be this symbol. Then I pass the period. I only want to pull one year's worth of data and the interval is going to be per day. Over here, I'm just dropping an A's from close and then I'm visualizing our data. As you can see over here, we have the date and we have the BTC USD close price. Right, starting with our data pre-processing, what's different now with other models is that LSTM expects inputs in the shapes of samples, time steps, and also features. So it's not really a one-to-one -one comparison. First, we need to have the number of samples in terms of sequences. Then we need the time steps, which is basically going to be the length of each sequence which in our case, we are going to use 60 sequences as a one sample and also the features, which in our case, we only have one feature in our model. It's just the date and the price of the crypto. So for example, down here, how an example work through is that let's say our data is this array over here, one to 10. In our case, is all the BTC prices for the last year, which is 365 or 66 days. And then the time step is three. In our case, we're gonna use 60. So the input now for the LSTM is going to be one, two, three, 
as the first sample and the first sample is going to have three time steps one two three and the target variable is only going to be four so what this means is that we are going to split our raw data into sequences now of 60 so from january 1st for example until the end of feb almost 60 days it's going to be sequence one and it's going to have one target value and then we're going to move on from january 2nd january 3rd and then take 60 sequences at a time so that's the difference when you're running an lstm model it takes the input as sequences so what we have to do now is that we have to prepare the data our data in sequences for the past year so first okay first over here i'm just scaling our data using min max scaler and then i'm just feeding it into our raw data so this is going to convert the btc prices into a value between zero and one then we are going to split our raw data we are going to use 80 percent for our train data and then 20 percent for our test data then we are going to create this function over here which takes as input our raw data and then the time step equals one which we are going to change later on because we're going to use time steps of 60 a sequence of 60 values then we are creating these x and y empty arrays which we are going to store the data later on over here and then this for loop over here is splitting our code into chunks of 60 as our x's and then the corresponding y so as we've shown over here we are going to select the values for btc from the 1st of january all the way to the next 60 data points so somewhere around the start of march let's say and then the corresponding y and then we are going to select the data from the 2nd of january all the way to the 7th of march then the 3rd of january all the way to the 3rd of march so chunks of 60. this is what this for loop does over here then we are just running our function we have just created so we can create our x train y train by passing our train data set and then time steps of 60 and we repeat the same process for test 2. then at the end we are just reshaping the input so our final input to be samples time steps and also features which we only have one feature over here and if we try and visualize our x train for example over here you can see that we are going to have the first 60 values of btc and then later on we're going to have the second sample another chunks of 60 then another chunks of 60 and then all these first chunk for example of 60 if we check let's say our uh, y train which is it was there before y train is going to only correspond to this first value over here the second chunk of 60 is going to correspond to this one the third chunk of 60 is going to correspond to this one etc etc i know it's very difficult to understand this but maybe try and watch another video that explains the theory of lstms in our example we are mostly concerned about running them right next we are going to build our lstm model so some general overviews of lstm is a recurrent neural network designed to process sequential data and as a lot of people say is actually used in time series forecasting now i highly doubt that i've never used this in time series because it gives me very bad results on the predictions ahead but i'm sure there must be some use cases that people use lstms and they make sense anyway over here we're just building our model we are going to use a sequential model we are going to add our first layer of 60 neural networks and we are going to return the sequences the input shape is going to be our time step which is 60 comma one feature which is going to be this feature over here then we are adding another layer with 50 neural nets then we are adding a tense layer which is going to be 25 neural nets and then at the end we have one layer which is going to be our output our predictions next we are compiling our model we are using adam as optimizer which is the most widely used optimizer 
and our evaluation metric is going to be mean square error. And down here, we are feeding our model, we are passing our X, our Y, patch size equals one, and then epoch is going to be five times, so we're gonna try five times to reduce our loss, and then verbose equals one. Next, we are just making predictions on our X train and Y test, and we're storing it over here. And then down here, we are investing the transform predictions and actual values. So before we had the data scaled, so a value between zero and one, and now we want to scale it back into the actual number, like 100K, for example, so we can actually visualize it. So if we run this, you can see we start with epoch one, we're gonna fit the whole data the first time, calculate the loss, and then we're gonna repeat these five times, get the best model, and that's gonna be our final model. There you go, you can see it's still running. Nice, it finished. The next step now is the forecasting ahead. And this is a bit complicated now because we have to run the forecasting ahead in chunks of 60 and also one step at a time. So first we have to select the last 60 days then we have to reshape these last 60 days to the same shape as we said before which is basically samples time steps and features uh, then we have to create this future forecast empty array which we're going to be appending on then we're going to say for underscore which is like anything in range of prediction ahead so this is going to be the number which we are going to input for the predictions ahead. Let's say this number over here, 15. Then we want to first predict on the last 60 days. Then we want to store this next predict into the future forecast. Then this next input now is going to be a combination of the future input, which is this one over here, plus the next prediction. So the prediction we are predicting from here and then the future input now is going to be the next input which we have created reshape it into the same format as before which is as we said samples time steps and features and we are going to repeat this 15 times which is the range of our prediction ahead and then we are going to inverse transform the future forecast numbers so we have an actual value and not the min max scale then down here we are just calculating the latest close price of our tiger symbol and the last predicted price of our ticket symbol so we can actually visualize them over here the latest close price and the price after 15 days which is going to be this price over here at the end next we are just printing the latest close price and also the latest predicted price based on the prediction ahead so if we run this quickly you can see it made all the 15 predictions that's why you see these green lines 15 times and then we can see the latest close price for btc is 1 1 and then the price after 15 days is 69k Next, we just want to plot all of our results by creating this final graph. So we start with the figure size, then we plot the BTC data, which is actually all of our data using a blue color, which is this blue color you see over here. Then we are plotting this AXV line, which is basically this gray line that separates our train data with our test data. Then we are going to plot our train and test predictions. So first we calculate the actual range, which is the date. And then we plot over here the train predictions using green, which is this green you see over here. You can see we do a very good job on predicting on data that the model was trained on, which makes sense. Same case for our test predictions. Again, you can see them over here, not bad actually but we already have the Y train, that's why we do so well. And then over here, we are creating the index for the future predictions in terms of dates. And then we are actually plotting it using this red color over here. So as you can see, it does not look like it did a very good job because it's completely unseen data, which is exactly what I said at the beginning of the video that 
LSTMs are not good on predicting stock prices or crypto prices on data ahead. Over here, we're just adding the titles and then the labels and the legend and then plt.show to view the graph. So if we actually run it, because I think this changed. Yeah, this change, you can see is a lot better fit today since the last time I've run it, but the predictions ahead, they are still terrible. Right, the final bit I have over here is that I copy and paste all of the chunks of the code I have explained above into one cell just to test if everything works together in one go. And the reason we do this is because in the next step, which is creating a simulate app, we need the code to run all in one go in one cell. So I'm just bringing it together to see how it works. And as you can see, it's still running. It made our predictions ahead 15 days. We have the results, we have the graph, everything works fine. So now we have created the code that takes us input the Tiger. So BTC, for example, it runs LSTM, it makes predictions on train, test, and ahead. And now we are ready to create our Streamlit app. However, I'm going to leave that for the next video. So I want to keep the Python and the coding in this video. And then in the next video, we're going to show how you can create this Streamlit app from scratch. Right. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and you've gained enough value out of this video. If you feel like you did, I would really appreciate it. If you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for future videos.